So in this video, I'm going to talk a little about the Model X energy consumption. So yesterday I was out doing some tests and I don't, I don't need to show you the actual test, but you know the drill and I drive like 20 kilometers back and forth. Uh, so compensate for wind and elevation. And then um, the parameters here, are I drive at 100 kilometers per hour constant. I use cruise control and autopilot. So 100 kilometers per hour, the air conditioning was on automatic 21 degrees Celsius. And the results are that first test I switched off range mode and I had ludicrous on and it was 236 watt hour per kilometer. So on the next test I switched on range mode and it made almost no difference. That was a bit su surprising because in the P85D Model S, once you turn on the range mode, the consumption went down split 7%, whereas here it almost doesn't do any difference. So I have some theories that my test route was a bit uh, like up and down rugged and that that requires some power because this car is heavy. So um, um, the, you know the range mode will um, switch on the front more and more and like you will be more or less like a front uh, front wheel drive. But w if more power is needed, then the rear rear wheels will also the rear engine. Sorry, the the rear motor will also help. But because the rear motor in the mol, I mean in the 90D is smaller, whereas on the P90D is bigger and less efficient. So, yeah, that was a bit disappointing. But uh, maybe I will have to do another test for that. But you see, okay, in the third test, I tried to switch off Ludicrous to see if that made any difference. Uh, so the range mode was still on. It was same. Just same result, so that that is also what I expected. That ludicrous doesn't do anything; it will just make more power available. But as long as have um, uh, like cruise control active, you know, it does use more power. So on the fourth test, I tried to use low suspension because this when the lowering the car will not change the frontal area that much, except that it might do something with the the, the airflow under the car and also. You get slightly less frontal area on the tires, and the tires here are freaking huge. So that was 231. So it actually, well, it seems to be slightly lower, yeah. And then with on the last test, I did very low, and also that one showed slightly lower results. So you you get like you know marginally lower result if you try very low. But the problem with low and very low was that the ride got significantly harder and I also have the 22 inch wheels that's not very comfortable so this I mean and if you compare this to oh yeah by the way the last I also did a, a, even a last test which was to reduce the speed to 90 kilometers per hour and that sh gave a pretty nice uh, like de uh, decrease in consumption so that means um, I mean, why is this consumption so high? Because I tested the, the facelift 70D not a long time ago and the result was so much lower, 170 watt hour per kilometer, which is 37% lower. <laughs> it's freaking a lot. So I have some theories why. First is that these tires are freaking huge, 22 inch, 265 front, 285 in the back. And they might not have the best rolling resistance, so I suspect that the tires, um, yeah, add maybe 10 to 15 percent. I will replace them with 20 inch um, slipstream as soon as possible. So this is very like interesting that I have tested the freaking huge ones. That's the first reason. Second reason is probably because you know the the, the drag coefficient in the Model X and the Model S are the same. 0.24 CD, you know? but the area, the frontal area on the Model X is much, much bigger. So for to count resistance, wind resistance, you have to take the CD number and multiply it by frontal area. And that means Model X is bigger, so more, more friction, especially at higher speed. So that cannot, almost cannot be, you know, matched with the Model S. And I compared 
the performance this one is the p you know performance which has a big rear motor versus the 70d which has a smaller rear motor and those cars are always more efficient even if you drive it on the range mode because eventually the the rear motor will all also need to work a little bit so for my car you know the less efficient rear motor will have to kick in sometimes and that sucks more energy than the, the small ones so these are probably the three factors that <laughs> make this uh, consumption so high it is so high now that i'm a bit worried uh, how i'm gonna do the long trips but at least i will do something which is to switch wheels i, I think that will that will help a lot it will bring the numbers close to 200 instead of 230 hopefully we'll see in a couple of weeks maybe in a couple of months but yeah so you have to know i mean when i drove the neil spenter's uh, 90d model x in america i was getting consumption numbers very close to millennium falcon which is um, a model s but you see the millennium falcon had one big rear motor which is less efficient than the 90d which has you know two smaller motors so in a way you know the the disadvantage with a bigger frontal area in the mall x uh and then the so like um like a new a new efficient mall x could match an all outdated less efficient mall s yeah if you know if stuff is right like you know, that car had 20 inch slipstream the american car so, but I will most likely not be able to match the 90D's um, consumption because I, <laughs> I went for the performance, of course, I had to do that. So I guess already now I can give you guys a recommendation if you're thinking about the buying a Mol X and which model to take. If you don't care about consumption and you have lots of money and you want performance, <laughs> go with the P or maybe or even Ludicrous. But if you want the longest range, you have to get 20 inch slipstream wheels and also get uh, the 90d or or even the, the 70 or the 60 they are also efficient they don't have as much range as the, the bigger battery but they are also efficient because they have small motor in the back and also this is something tesla have told me it's like i guess unofficial information but they told me that the sl slipstream wheels are better aerodynamic wise than uh, than the 21 in uh, 22 or a 21 from the Model S uh, turbine wheels. Some people also claim that the turbine wheels make some kind of whistle noise, and that means at high speed, you know, they maybe kind of create some kind of turbulence. It was probably designed to be beautiful, but not aerodynamic. So yes, that is <laughs> info about uh, consumption. I find it very relevant and, in, and uh, important because I need to know how much the car will consume at different uh, situations. So yes, um, I guess uh, that's it for now.